My dear the beloved in Christ, we live in a society where responsibility is shirked, denied, or displaced. Individuals not only find someone or something else to blame for their own sinful actions, faults, or oversights, but also expect others to take on the burden of the responsibilities which rightfully belong to them. We live in a me, me world. One of the pursuant mindsets of such a selfish outlook is the mad pursuit of an expectation for instant gratification. On the materialistic side, there's no longer the necessity of having to wait and earn enough money to work toward and purchase that which is desired. It's become so easy to just swipe a little piece of plastic and immediately obtain what is wanted. Any consideration of future consequences does not even enter into the scheme of the moment. These people have bought into the belief that it's the norm and the only way to do things. They scoff at the idea of having to wait for something or work toward it. This mindset is sad and dangerous enough on the material level as it becomes a vicious cycle with no real way out, but it has permeated even the spiritual outlook of many. My dear and beloved in Christ, a great number of people act in the name of immediate gain or satisfaction without thought of any moral responsibility. They have twisted right and wrong into a kind of situational morality which varies according to their desires and according to what's popular at the time. They pick and choose which of God's laws suit them and which do not fit into their lifestyle of self-gratification. They make God fit to their own measure. If they pray and do not get what they ask for right away, they give up prayer because God's not acting as they expect Him to. When asked to give up certain friends, places, or types of entertainment which are an occasion of sin, they feel it's not fair and shirk such moral responsibility and do what they want anyway with no thought of future consequences. This ends in a vicious cycle of multiple sins and moral weakness which keeps them in evil's grasp. Such selfishness definitely affects how people act, not only with God, but also with their neighbor. Their neighbor is generally viewed as someone who can be advantageous to them. One person slipped up and actually said, I only keep people around who are beneficial to me. My dear and beloved in Christ, lest we think we do not fall under any of these categories and that such a way of life does not apply to us, it would be beneficial to hear how Jesus expressed his sadness to St. Margaret Mary. He said, Keep always in the depths of your hearts this secret which I have confided to my friends. I am wounded to my very heart by a great number of good people, by those who say they are mine, but who really do not love me, for they do not give me the great love I expect from them. I have overwhelmed them with kindness, but they have offered me in return only the scraps from their tables. Scraps have been rejected by other creatures whom they prefer to me. They're afraid they'll be overgenerous with me and yet I've loved them more than my own life. Draw near, my children, and put balm upon the wound in my side, a wound inflicted by those who call themselves my friends. Jesus spoke thus on many occasions to St. Margaret Mary, repeating his lament that his friends do not love him enough. And he said he was profoundly sad and bitterly disappointed with them. My dearly beloved in Christ, how can we be instrumental in working for the conversion of souls, especially our loved ones who've fallen away from the church if we're not fully doing what we are supposed to? To make matters worse, because of the heresies of Vatican II and its new church, many people erroneously think that they'll go to heaven because everyone supposedly goes there. A person recently attended a gravesite service by a conciliar minister or priest. They were not sure which because he showed up in jeans, boots, and a modernistic stall. 
he said, so-and-so is now in heaven. In reality, the person's actions had been far from what God has directed. Nevertheless, supposedly he was with his friends and relatives in heaven. Then he said a prayer which included, Lord, have mercy on him. The person then turned to another and asked, if he's in heaven, then why is everyone asking our Lord to have mercy on him? The person was immediately told, you think too much. How very convenient to have, to not to have a hell. This automatically relieves everyone of all moral responsibility. So they can live and do as they like. This also allows allowances for the tepid and mediocre Catholics who give God the minimum of service as long as it doesn't interfere with things they consider more important. My dearly beloved in Christ, Almighty God did not set up a cafeteria-type religion in which you choose what you want and leave the rest. He specifically said that life is a constant spiritual warfare between the world, the flesh, and the devil. Against the world, the flesh, and the devil. Personal effort and prayer are essential for victory. Just as soldiers cannot just quit in the midst of battle, so we cannot quit without dire consequences. My dearly beloved in Christ, it would be wise to not only deny ourselves of items which are not really necessary, in order to give your credit cards a break and gain the merits of self-denial, but also to put far more time and effort in serving God first before anything else. If you always put God first, He promised that if you do what you're supposed to, He'll take care of all the rest. It's necessary that we accept and deal with the spiritual and material responsibilities that God has placed before us and not try to shirk them. This mindset of responsibility is contrary to the prevalent one of entitlement. Too many expect things to be doled out to them because they not only deserve them, as so many commercials preach, but because they have them coming to them. On what grounds one is tempted to ask. In closing, at a time in which we're bombarded by evil on all sides, we can only persevere in our faith if we pray fervently, cooperate with God's grace, and strive to serve Him faithfully. God does not reward the lazy or the indolent. He has given each one of us a particular job to do, which can be done by no other. The job description does not include indulging oneself in all the entertainment and pleasure this world has to offer. It includes sacrifice, self-denial, and above all, love of God and submission to His holy will. God looks for our effort and sincerity of heart in this endeavor. I'll close with a short story. A hermit was one day transported into a monastery where there were about 300 monks living. He saw a multitude of devils following these monks everywhere, in the garden, in the cloister, and especially the church. They seemed to be trying in every way to bring them into sin. The same hermit was then transported into a populous city and was astonished to find there only one devil at the city gate having apparently but little to do. Then an angel gave him to understand that the devils were very numerous and very busy in the monastery because there the monks resisted them manfully and were striving to serve God. While in the city, the inhabitants of themselves followed evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.